today's video I want to share my thoughts on how our perception of ourselves can actually limit our experiences and our lives. Hello, welcome! If you're new here, I'm Kets. Go grab your drink, sit and let's just talk for a bit. I'm gonna give you some context. You know I'm one for context. I love to contextualize people. Contextualize, is that a word? For years I've seen myself as an introvert. I saw some definitions online, I identified myself with the definition of what it means to be an introvert and I owned it. You know, I'm an introvert, I'm proud of it. I would tell anyone that met me that I am an introvert, even to myself. Let's travel in time for... What's this? Let's travel in time, like 15 years back. Back when I was a teenager, I wanted to be cool, like one does. When I was a teenager, the emo scene was a thing. I really liked to listen to Rasmus. I don't know if you know the band. That's around the time where I was obsessed with Linkin Park, with Evanescence, Avenged Sevenfold a bit later, which I love until today. With Temptation, you know, for people who like heavy metal, those bands were like the entrance door to a lot of darkness and anger and feelings buried deep inside you. <laughs> but you know, for me, those bands were cool, those people were cool, so for me, it, it was cool to be a bit serious, a bit angry, to be kind of an antisocial, a misfit, and back in those days you'd often hear me talk about how much I hated people. I felt different than the most, I felt like I was special, like one does before you realize that the world does not revolve around you, you know? Tell me in the comments below if you recognize also that you went through that phase where you feel like you're special, almost like you have some superpowers or a sixth, sixth <laughs> sense. I was never the quiet, shy kid that does not intervene in class, but I was also never the outgoing, popular kid, you know? I was never bullied in the true sense of that word, but I was occasionally made fun of. Ever since I was a toddler, I always loved to do things by myself. You know, my grandma, she used to tell me that when I was a kid, she was taking care of me, you know, and she would forget, forget that, I, that I was home. Because I would just be in some corner of her apartment, just entertained, doing some drawing or playing with my toys, you know. And throw back to my teenage years, I would enjoy just being with myself, listening to music, writing. I had a blog which no one knew about except for my brother. <laughs> Even today, you know, I love doing things by myself. This channel is something that I'm doing by myself. I'm literally alone talking to a camera right now. So it's just me. I, I like to be alone. Another thing is I, 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 don't, I don't know if it has been always this way, but I often feel uncomfortable in social situations, even with family. I find it hard, very hard actually, to make friends, especially as an adult. When I was a teenager, it was easy. No, that's all good. Recognizing your features, your characteristics, recognizing behaviors, patterns, interests. However, that can be harmful when you start to identify yourself with an adjective. One thing is to recognize characteristics that fit with the definition of introvert. Another very different thing is defining your identity based on it. Is saying, instead of saying I behave like this, I like that, I often feel like whatever, you start saying I am this way, I am an introverted person, or I am shy, or I am anxious. Like if that characteristic is an essential and a fundamental part of you as a person. Now, this is perfectly okay if you are creating a character for a novel, but you are a person, you are a complex human being, you have a lot 
result of different characteristics, you act in a different way depending on the situations, and most importantly, you will be learning, growing, changing throughout your life. If you do not change, you're probably doing something wrong. You are supposed to grow as a person. And any experience that you might have gone through in the past does not define you. What I did yesterday does not define what I will do today, you know? I might have felt awkward last week in a party. Wait. This is an analogy, it is just to make a point. We are in the middle of a world pandemic. Please do not go to parties. So, I might have been uncomfortable in a Zoom call last week. It does not mean that this will happen again next week when I have the next Zoom call. You can just prepare yourself in a different way, for example. Dress something that makes you feel more confident. Have a script on your side to help you during the Zoom call. Skip the coffee. I have a video about quitting coffee. It was my first video in the channel. You can go check it. I will try to put the link here. There's some part of you that you are actually able to control. And when you connect yourself with an adjective, with a characteristic, you are actually convincing yourself that that's just who you are and that there's nothing you can do about it. And I don't think that's a good thing. Also, just because I like to be alone and I identify with some of the characteristics that define an introvert person does not mean I am an introvert. And why is this so bad, in my opinion? Because you might find yourself using that as an excuse to not do the things you want or you should do. For example, I will hate this job because I'm an introvert. This will be extra hard for me because I'm an introvert. I always act this way, I'm an introvert. You know, you might find yourself not even making an effort to talk with someone in a social event because I cannot do it, I'm an introvert. So by telling yourself that you are an introvert, you might actually be limiting yourself and your behavior. And by telling yourself that you are an introvert, you may never get out of your comfort zone. You might find yourself making decisions, acting a certain way, not because you want to, but because it fits the storyline that you created for yourself, you know? You hate making phone calls. Maybe you just need to practice. Maybe you need to make more phone calls. Maybe you need to put yourself in that uncomfortable situation until it's not that uncomfortable. When I first started my job, I would jump whenever my phone rang. I would feel my heart beating so fast, I was so nervous, I hated making phone calls. So, my boss at the time had this brilliant idea. Oh, you hate making phone calls. Okay, I'm going to make that an objective for you. An objective so that I would be evaluated on by the end of the year. And that turned out to be actually awesome because I did not have any choice. I had to make phone calls and I hated that, but with time it became easier. I'm still not crazy about making phone calls, but I know now that I can do it. This is an example. Another one, you're bad at social events. Well, maybe you haven't been in that many social events. Maybe it's just uncomfortable to you because it's a new thing. And it's normal for the human being to be scared, to feel fear when doing something different. We are scared of the unknown, it's natural. So maybe if you go to more social events, you will feel more comfortable. So a lot of our behaviors are linked not as much with our personality, but with our experiences. With practice comes perfection. And that applies to everything. Like, you don't have any friends. Me neither. Welcome to the club! Maybe you haven't put yourself in situations where you could actually make friends. Maybe it does not have anything or almost anything to do with your personality, with the person you actually are. I have a few friends. Like two. <laughs> do my dogs count? Or maybe you actually are 
an introvert. You know, let's assume, yes, you are an introvert, you fit that box. And you still should not limit yourself because of that. You still should not stop doing the things you want to do, the things you might love, based in the fact that you are an introvert. You should not use that as a limitation of any sort, basically. If you often get yourself thinking how much you wish you were different, how much you wish you would be capable of applying to that job, of going to that party, of talking with that person, and you don't do it because you are an introvert, well, do it. Go ahead. Embrace the awkward, embrace the uncomfortable, and grow with the experience. Even if it's awful, I promise you, you will learn something with it. Or maybe ask yourself, what would I do if I was an extrovert? You might just discover something new about yourself. The bottom line is that as human beings, we are constantly growing, learning, changing, and in my opinion, we should not convince ourselves of anything that can potentially limit that growth or even stop that growth. So, question for today. What is something you tell yourself that might be limiting you in some way? Tell me in the comment section below. Let's continue the conversation. It's the most fun part of doing these videos, you know, it's that we get to talk about stuff. Let me know if you like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I make new videos every week. See you in the next one. Bye! Was one, two, Balu, person watching the video, person watching the video, Balu. Consider yourself introduced. Here we are for one more video. Okay.